Ours has been a dizzying, serpentine journey, plunging into the bottomless mysteries of light. Its elusiveness and intangibility inspired us to enact some of the most exotic and uh, um, um, strange interactions between light and matter that nonetheless can be bound into the straight jacket of a piece of art. Despite the overwhelming century-long success of quantum physics, we still do not know where and if there lies a horizon separating our reality from the quantum world of light upon which it is based. This um, frontier between the microcosm and the macrocosm we explore through art. For countless hours in unspeakable darkness, we found ourselves chasing after a very faint breed of light called sonoluminescence, light created by sound waves in a liquid environment. If uh, we imagine sound waves in three dimensions, if you can uh, recall in, in physics books you have this peaks and valleys, the, the valleys are actually pockets of empty space. And if the, these pockets are small enough, in other words, if the wavelength of the sound is short enough, these pockets can enter microbubbles of gas in a liquid. Uh, now, these are not the kinds of bubbles that uh, we see in beer or champagne. They are invisible to the naked eye. But once this pocket of empty space enters that bubble, it collapses, it implodes, and it is at this moment that extremely high temperatures are reached in this gas because it becomes very dense, and light is emitted for much less than a billionth of a second. But this flash of light repeats per sound cycle, so that's about 40,000 times per second, and takes the shape of those sound waves, allowing us to observe sound in three dimensions in total darkness. And although we know that the light comes from these imploding uh, bubbles, we, we still do not have an ultimate explanation for what happens during this implosion. And there are various theories that it might be collision-induced radiation, or it might be quantum tunneling. This is yet to be found out. When we started our research for creating this piece, Camera Lucida, we consulted uh, the foremost experts on sonar luminescence in the world, and many of them told us that uh, we are engaging in a pointless pursuit, that we will never be able to achieve sonar luminescence on a scale that we envision, and we will never be able to create a public artwork with this very exotic phenomenon. However, we persevered, and uh, on the slide you see the second version of the work that is shown here in uh, Japan, in Ninja Castle in Kyoto, and uh, it is a very impressive 60-liter sphere where people observe the largest uh, display of sonar luminescence. What scientists do in the lab usually takes place in a small cuvette, maybe less than a glass of water. And uh, originally, we wanted to make it uh, a spherical environment. However, the scientists uh, advised, us, advised us to do it in a rectangular chamber. Uh, and here you see the first version that uses eight ultrasonic transducers that send the sound into water and cause sonoluminescence. However, the second version, inspired by our success, we built the spherical version and it was so much more robust and powerful, and we only used three transducers. And besides standing waves that you can see here, we were able to achieve much more exotic formations of sound waves and observe much more interesting and complex sound behaviors, such as spirals, rings, um, jets. So, one of the amazing things is that uh, such extremely high temperatures arise, as, as high as are found on the sun, uh, and with just so very little energy, just some high frequency sound. Uh, this caused a big stir in the physics community during the nine, uh, 90s and the early 2000s, 
Uh, many scientists were convinced that perhaps nuclear fusion might be achievable by this means. But in uh, an article in Nature magazine, actually by Kenneth Suslick, uh, whose quote you, you see here, uh, disproved that essentially the temperatures are high but not quite high enough for nuclear fusion. And right after that, all the research on sonoluminescence nearly stopped. And uh, Evelina and I are among uh, the very few who continue to pursue this mysterious phenomenon. And it was during working with uh, Camera Lucida that for the first time we got this hope that it is possible to approach such complex questions as quantum physics and uh, portray, communicate on a sensible level of an artwork to audience that has no um, background in science and uh, transmit these uh, uh, messages from this very distant micro world, the world where quantum behavior reigns. And I want to point out one sentence in this quote by Kenneth Saslik. Uh, if the energy density in an acoustic field that produces cavitation is compared with that in the collapsed cavitation bubble that lumin luminesces, there is an amplification of almost one trillion. So the energy density is amplified one trillion times. And even if you have no idea of physics and you're standing in the dark room and see this, and you experience this kind of event, it's almost like being uh, present at the, at the birth of a star. And uh, because this work is performed by us in the darkness and every visitor who saw it came through our hands and up to this day, it's our most exhibited work. We, we have witnessed very, very uh, strong uh, experiences that people have, uh, including out-of-body experience and uh, really very, very strange uh, visions. So now we're going to make a leap from micro-bubbles of gas to macro-bubbles of soap film. Uh, soap membranes were the original protocells. The, uh, the foam on the surface of the seas and, and oceans where life was born uh, is the electrochemical structure that eventually evolved into the very first living cells. In uh, 10,000 peacock feathers in foaming acid, this performance, uh, we point a uh, white laser beam at a soap bubble and instead of going through the, uh, the, the, the bubble skin, it, uh, as it would through most uh, optical media, it miraculously gets trapped inside and uh, tr as though it's traversing an optical fiber and uh, the beam also breaks up into micron thin optical tracks each of which can generate a gigantic uh, projection of molecular dynamics, fluid dynamics, nonlinear optics, and non-Euclidean geometry taking place within this ultra-thin bubble skin. So th this performance was originally developed for Planetaria because just from a pinpoint laser light, we get a 300 degree 60 uh, 360 degree projection uh, of the hemispherical uh, shape, which is uh, exactly the shape of uh, a soap bubble. So we work not with floating spherical bubbles, but with hemispherical bubbles that we put on a glass plate. And uh, when we did this performance in 2010 in Amsterdam Planetarium, uh, there was another artist in the audience, Koki Ake, and when she saw our performance, she was so inspired that she built this um, inflatable pavilion in the shape of five conjoined uh, soap bubbles that feeds about a hundred people and that's where we perform uh, this piece right now together with other artists from our lab who are encouraged to create uh, immersive spherical projections for this very special space so uh, it's uh, it's very inspiring and gratifying for us to see how our exploits in behaviors of light and nonlinear optics uh, lead to this kind of biomorphic uh, non-square architecture. Uh, for our next uh, piece, 
we continue to explore the matter tuning capacities of high frequency sound. Um, in this case, we use sound to levitate leaves of gold. So th this is achieved by means of a standing wave. We already mentioned them uh, in the camera lucida piece. So uh, a standing wave, uh, it's a very simple phenomenon. And the only thing you have to have that between the uh, emitter of sound, so this is a speaker, and on top it's just a reflector. These are not magnets. It's all done with acoustic sound that you can even do it with your voice if it's strong enough. So the, just the, the wavelengths of sound has to fit an even number of times or a whole number of times. And then it reflects and it, it gets more powerful. So the areas of high pressure get more pressure and the areas of lower pressure, these antinodes where the gold is levitating, they, because they become even more vacuous and they really suck the gold in. So we perform this piece as a sound performance, and there is one monotonous frequency of 15 kilohertz. However, the gold leaf is spinning and um, modulating the bass sound frequency. So as the, the viewer, the listener, observes this performance, besides trying to figure out what is going on and what sound affect which sound, they also the, the sensation of weightlessness is evoked. And uh, of course, we are all so determined by gravity, but weightlessness or microgravity is a much more state in the universe. With uh, mucilaginous omniverse, uh, we also uh, work with acoustic levitation, but of a different sort, uh, with uh, low frequency sound, which uh, is projected from below a bath of uh, silicon oil, and on top of that bath are droplets of the same oil that hover above the bath. Um, as they hover, these droplets bounce on this air-oil interface in phase with those sound waves that are causing the levitation. These surface waves uh, can interlock with the surface waves of other droplets, and uh, allow for uh, geometric rafts to form, as well as orbital motion. So, in, in other words, such uh, usual and common behavior of liquid, in this case, is completely, completely different. So, little did we know when we started developing this work that uh, uh, this system, these wa walker droplets, as they called, they, they are the, the largest system, the largest observable system, which is actually a macroscopic system. You can very well see it with your eyes that uh, displays quantum behavior. And uh, that was realized when a uh, double slit experiment was, was successfully performed with these bouncing droplets. And double slit experiment is a very famous experiment in physics that for the first time demonstrate the wave nature of light. Because there was for a long time uh, a dispute in science where the light was a wave or a particle. So interestingly enough, the same double slit experiment in the 20th century was performed successfully with electrons and with uh, quite massive molecules, fullerens the carbon-60 molecules. So uh, even matter can behave as waves, which you can experience by watching the mucilaginous omniverse performance. So uh, now we will watch a, a video uh, documentation of mucilaginous omniverse. So as you're watching this video, I, I really don't like to, to talk, but uh, we have very little time. I would like to point out that in the very beginning of our collaboration with Dmitri, we refused to use recording and uh, fixative media and playback media. So all our artworks are fluid, uh, dynamic environments or performances that unfold directly in front of the spectator, in front of the viewer 
and we abandoned this recording media in favor of direct observation. So in the case of Mucilaginous Omniverse, we, uh, a musical composition is played through speakers and on top of one of the speakers we have a bath of silicon oil and from a syringe other drops of silicon oil are released in real time and that's what the audience is observing, trying to figure out what is happening. So we believe that by this direct observation where you can see the phenomenon, its scale and its behavior, you can synchronize with the uh, very complex quantum world that is all around us, inside of our bodies, inside of our minds. Next slide. Uh, we have to fit in yet one more uh, artwork, our, our, our latest uh, piece uh, for which we decided to aim our white laser sheet into a minus 200 degree cloud uh, in which subatomic particles known as cosmic rays leave macroscopic trails. Now, most of us are quite familiar with the effects of solar radiation on our planet. However, very few of us have any familiarity with extrasolar radiation. At this very moment, we are being bombarded by billions of charge carriers coming from every possible direction in outer space. The variety of charge signatures corresponds to the scope of cosmic origins, uh, ranging from solar emissions and those of other stars to hitherto uncharted physical processes at the edge of the perceivable universe. Some of these cosmic bullets are a thousand times more powerful than anything ever launched at CERN's Large Hadron Collider, and approximately once a year, a particle arrives that is 10 million times more energetic. These particles are presumed to originate in uh, supernovas and active black holes. If we can uh, watch a brief uh, video documentation of this piece, and that will be the end of our presentation. So as the cloud cools, very soon you'll be able to see the first trails of cosmic rays or cosmic radiation. This artwork allows you to realize that what we usually perceive to be empty space surrounding us is in fact a very restless sea of energy that is capable of seeding clouds and sometimes even to breathe life into matter.
Thank you very much.